What's up, guys? This is Brand from Buddy Fight News Corner. This is Tyrant Gottle. This is what I played in Houston. This is not inspired by the like, one guy who played and topped in Chicago with, with it. This is something me and Joel have been working on since Squadric Jolt came out from the spoilers from Japan. Uh, the buddy obviously Demon Gottle Origin. When you call it, search either. It search any Demon Gottle, but you search either. Origin or Gordrick Jolt. And it's a 2 2 2. So it's got two crit, which is great. The only size 2, besides Gordrick, obviously, is Tyrant Cerberus. It's one gauge. And when it enters the field, search your deck for a Tyrant item. The two Tyrant items in the deck are All Piercing and Ogar. Ogar is the only one you ever want to search because it's one gauge, and the deck's kind of tight on gauge, especially early on in the game. It's a 5-2 that you can counteract, pay up to as many up to 5 life, and get that much crit. This really helps for when you're trying to close games and your opponent's at like 6 life. You just pay 4 life and swing for 6, and you shield check them. The other item is All Piercing. It's a 6-2, two, 2 gauge to equip. The 2 gauge is why you don't want to ever search this card. And then, when you equip it, you gain 3 life. It's really nice when you see it, but you never want to search it because of that gauge cost. And then, for the buddy, obviously, it's 2-2-2, two, 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 really good stats, and it searches things. When it's in the soul of a Demon God, it'll give the Demon God a plus 2, plus 2. Makes Gordrick Jolt a 10-3-7 with just one of them in the soul. 2 Armor Knight Eagle Ace, I really don't like this card. There were so many times where I needed to draw another Dual Dragon, and I drew this instead. He's, when he's in the soul of your item, your item can't be destroyed. I don't think that was ever relevant in any of my games that I've played with this deck at all. I probably will drop this to like one and maybe play a tiger ace two. I just want I, I just never actually draw these when I need to and I draw this guy instead. And four four tyrant healer. Three two one. When it enters the field if you have a if you have a item equipped gain a life if you have another tyrant on the field draw a card. So if you just have Ogar equipped you call healer gain a life and draw a card. And it's got two crit and the life is really good because even if they kill Godel, they have to get through your life too. And usually you stay at 10 plus life until they kill Godel. Um, then we have Spiritos. He's a, he's a zero. He's 2 on 2. He's got pretty poor stats because he's a zero. And you can pay one gauge and put him in the Soul of a Dual Dragon. And if he's in the Soul of a Dual Dragon, give that Dual Dragon Penetrate. He helps you deal with wall decks and gives Godel Penetrate. Hmm. Then we have how the Zumbao Nail. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's a two one one size zero. I really don't like this card, but it's a dual dragon and it gets you a gauge on entry. When it enters the field, you have a dual dragon or an item gauge one. The, you you really you need to play this card just because you need that gauge turn one to make sure you can almost always go into Godel turn one. Because you can't go into Godel turn one and you don't. Uh, health buff yourself, you're going to lose. There's, they, you just won't be able to sustain yourself. And for more health, it, in one invigorating breath, if you have an item equipped or weapon equipped and you have no monster in the center, gain for life. It reduces how, by how many you have and drop, but you only play one, so that doesn't matter. It's just a nice health buff, because when you play it with this, that's seven life, call this, that's eight life. That's eight life in a turn, and you only used one card from your hand. Two Battle Spirit Unite. I used to have this at three. It's counter. Choose a monster in your field, and it gets power defense equal to the power of your item for the turn. So you use it to buff Demon Goddle's defense, so that way he's like 12, 13, 14 defense for the turn, and your opponent just has to pass to you because they can't hit it. I played two Dangerous Razies. It's a set spell. At the end of your attack phase, pay a gauge, put the top card of your deck into the soul of a monster, or, or the soul of a card on your field. You, you're always going to choose Demon Goddle, or you're going to choose, if you're feeling frisky, you put it in the soul of one of these two before you call Goddle, but that's a really risky play, and it's not the best, because if they counter kill this, you're out of gauge and the card. And then three on a boat. On a boat, pay one life, gauge one, and then choose a monster from your drop, and put in the soul of a card or a monster or item on your field. So this is how you put Eagle Ace in the soul, it's how you put Demon Goddle in soul, and it's how you put Spiritos in soul. 
really helps you soul buff Goddle even more while also giving you gauge for Razy and to call more Goddles. Three Insanity Circle. <laughs> if you have a Tyrant on the field, nullify the attack. And if you have a, a new game on life, and then if you have a weapon equipped, it can't be nullified. So they can't spell null if you have a item. If you have one of your items equipped, they can't spell null this no matter what. For Demon Slave Area, this is pretty much just another shield. That also gives it's because Goddle has counterattack. This is a really good card, and it can just completely destroy a whole bunch of decks that require cards in the field. Like um Card burn if they can't get the stuff out. Other Goddle decks if they attack with their their origin for whatever reason. For Battle Aura Circle, it's just a standard nullify if you don't have anything in the center. It's just the standard one. For Demon Arms Door Armor Gate, this is if you have an, a weapon equipped, one of the two weapons, you mill top five of your cards of your deck and choose one card from your drop zone and put it into the soul of a card on your field. So this is a this is the way you soul buff your Goddle the turn you play it. It lets you mill into your Goddles, mill into your Spiritoses, and put what you need in. And even if you don't, that's still one extra soul for Goddle so he can counterattack another thing. And then there's Goddle. He's an 8-3-5. Two gauge, call him on top with the other dual dragon. All attacks are redirected to him, no matter where they were originally. And then counteract, discard a card from your hand. When your opponent attacks with a item, destroy that card. So destroy the item. It's really good against Hero World because obviously they're items and not weapons. And that was what was holding back a Goddle before, was that it was just weapons. And Hero World was obviously very prevalent at the time, and it just wasn't doing much. But because it has 3 crit initially, as opposed to Arc's 2 crit, and helps you more damage because it's an impact monster, and has a base 8 power, so with just 1 origin, that's 10k. With 2, that's 12. And anything more than that's just overkill at that point. Um, the deck is really good. Like, even if you open pretty poorly, just because of Ogar, if you open with just these two cards, and your opponent pays a life for something, that's 9 damage you can deal turn 1. So if you are in a completely garbage situation, you can still pull ahead with just top decking one of these cards, because this nets you this, this will grab another copy of this, or a copy of this. So just, if you top deck into this, that's that's 5 damage. If you top deck into this, that's up to 9 damage. So it's really good, even if you're behind, but ideally you want to play Goddle and then sit on Goddle, and then use health buff yourself so that way if they kill Goddle, or if they, like, Loki it and they remove the soul, or if they do... Artilliger, or a Cult of Gwanif, any of those types of things, you have backup plans and you can actually play the game without you sitting there with nothing as Goddle dies. Um, I had a, a side deck, it is pretty basic, it's really only for a, like specific decks. It's just two, just two, two Nagas, two Nagas because Sun Dragons are still a thing and they will always be a thing. Dragon Force is annoying. Four of the... Whatever, how you pronounce this card. It's a gauge to destroy a set spell or remove a soul. You don't use a remove a soul. You use it to destroy the Great Fate Frozen Stars because they, if they play Great Fate and you can't get rid of it, you, you lose. There's no way around it. You cannot play the game if your opponent Great Fates you. You have no outs to it other than that, that card. And then the other card... For Majin Demon Slay, neither you nor your opponent can call size two or less monsters to the center. This is for 72 pillars. If you play this card against 72 pillars, they pretty much can't play the game because they always have to leave their center open and they have to have the set spell and their item, the book or whatever, equipped to use both of the destruction effects for Esmodai. Yeah, that's my Tyrant Goddle deck. Uh, we should have, I think, Card Burn and a couple other ones coming soon. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really good. It is really not many people actually respect Goddle at all or don't know how to play around it. So it's a really good pick, especially right now, because even with the Dragon Forces, you can still beat Dragon Force as long as they don't lari at you. 
you, you kind of died a laureate, but that's a different story. Alright guys, this is Brian from Buddy Fight News Corner, signing off.